Pelegi Technical Services, your computers and electronics concierge service. Welcome back. Today we're taking a look at this project that I put together called a Nixie Stick. Now, a Nixie Stick is basically a collection of little neon tube bulbs lined up in parallel and it's inside of a you know glass fixture here to keep you from touching it because it runs off of mains power. Now I came across this idea from a website called BigClive.com. The gentleman who runs it, Big Clive, also has a YouTube channel which you should check out. I'll put the link in the description below. He does amazing teardown videos and he has a bunch of nice projects on his website you can build. And that's actually how I came across them. I wanted to Put some you know LED projects together. I needed some ideas, so I did some searching online. I came across this site, and it was very informative. Came across the uh, YouTube channel, ended up subscribing to it, and like I said, that was a few years ago. And electronics and you know different hobbies have come and gone over the years, and recently have gotten back into it again. And uh, with the whole Pledgy Technical Services thing, I went back and looked at all the you know subscriptions that I had on YouTube personally and came across Big Clive again and said oh yeah that's right and I oh yeah that website and I kind of did that whole thing and went back over there and checked it all out and ended up building the Nixie stick now I could actually show you this is basically the end of a light bulb in fact this was a like a compact fluor a compact fluorescent bulb that went bad and I just salvaged it and cut the end of it off and it's just hot glued onto the top of this wine bottle I just stuck it in the wine bottle because that's all I really had but basically I'll show you what happens when you turn this on it just has this nice little random oscillation to it now there's no active circuits in this this is just a couple resistors a diode and a capacitor and ten of these neon bulbs now Big Clive lives over in the, in the UK in uh, the Island of Man and obviously they have a different power system over there they're using the 220 system so it's a little different the way he built it than the way I built it and he did provide instructions on his site for both ways but I'll actually show you here I have this all put together this is the bill of materials and uh, this is also known as a neon relax uh, relaxation ox oscillator and you'll see why uh, here's the different components very simple and here's I notated if you're doing this in the UK you want to do the 470 kilo ohm resistor here in the States you want to do a hundred kilo ohm and that's the only real difference between the two and you can see the schematic is pretty simple now again go to Big Clive's website I'll put this link in the description as well he has the whole write-up and how this works I won't go into those details here it's a little beyond the scope of my knowledge to be able to explain it back. I understand it when I read it, but I'm not an electrician by trade. My father was. Uh, I've helped him a lot throughout the years. I've done a lot of things. I've built a lot of little various projects here, like this uh, power supply, which there's videos on as well. This is a little bit different because it runs on main voltage, so it's a little bit more precarious. That's why I have it mounted in a glass. I have off camera here a bunch of other glass bottles like um, this soda bottle, some of these water bottles which I've taken the labels off of already. Um, my father's birthday is actually coming up this Thursday. He saw this when I built it a few months back, liked it, so I think I'm going to build one for him. It's actually uh, his birthday's on Thanksgiving this year and he was born on Thanksgiving so it's kind of a special, special day he makes a big deal of it. So I went ahead and put all the pieces together that we need in a little bag earlier. And um, I'm going to build this the same way. Now I did have to get other bulbs because the ones I got for this came as a pack of 10 and I used all 10 for this build. And when I uh, placed an order online recently for some parts I ended up getting a pack of 100. But these are actually a little smaller. They're the micro size but they should still work. So I'm going to go ahead and reposition the camera a little bit and we're going to get into the build here. Let's review these components. Here are the 10 NE2H neon bulbs. This is a 1N4007 diode. We have the 100 kilo ohm 
and the one kilo ohm resistors here. And we also have a 10 nano, nanofarad 100 volt uh, film. This is a, um, a particularly a film capacitor. Now you can use other capacitors on Clive's website. He mentions that he used, um, well, he shows pictures of a bunch of different ones he used. You probably can't use an electrolytic though unless you use a bipolar or one because the you know fact you're using AC here and you know it's been, it seems like you know the all the ones he used are all non-polarized so that's you know I just went up with this film one here and we're just going to go ahead and, and arrange it and I'm actually going to use this as a template and just lay this right out on top of it so I'll put the capacitor here in the middle and I'm going to go ahead and arrange some of this and we'll start soldering it together I'm also going to get my soldering iron and heat it up I went ahead and grabbed the macro lens and another light so we can get a better look at this. So I'm going to go ahead and build this component by component. Here we have the film capacitor with the leads bent outward and I'm going to start attaching the rest of the components outward from there. I took the lead from the capacitor and wrapped it around the lead of the diode over here. Notice the stripe. This is going to face the circuit. And this is also the neutral side of the circuit over here. Now we have the 100K resistor wired in. And here is that one kilo ohm resistor now tied in there. I also cut the leads level on both sides. And that's actually the entire power supply right there. Very, very simple. So the only thing I'm going to do now is just go ahead and I'm going to connect these ends, solder them up really good. And I'm going to take some of this wire here and I'm going to make long leads to go down to the bottom of my bottle of choice. And that's what I'm going to use to connect the lights to. And um, we'll go from there once I get those made up. Here we have a random length of wire that I'm going to make five more copies of and I'm going to double those copies to get two long thick pieces six wires ready for twisting we start by grabbing the end of the wire in a pair of pliers and then we just twist it manually with my fingers like this this isn't going to be really tight it's just a loose wrap you can see where I'm going with this I'm going to continue the whole way with the other uh, set of wires and here's the two sets of wires twisted up. What I also did was took two pliers, put them at either end and twisted this just to get this nice and tight. These are gonna serve as the support pieces for the lights, which are gonna be wired in parallel in between them. And the power supply is gonna mount at one end of it. I did this the same way in the wine bottle system that I used. Whereas if you go on Clive's website, he mentioned something about taking these and you know, building off of the leads, which works and it works great. But I wanted to make mine a little bit more, I don't know, robust. And besides, originally when I built it, I didn't know what I was going to put the final project into. So I wanted to have something that I could have maybe, you know, slipped into a tube or put someplace like on the ceiling, like out of reach where you weren't going to touch it anyway and it didn't really matter. You know, stuff like that. So I just went ahead and built it with the support rails originally and I like the idea so I'm going to go ahead and continue that way this time. I'm going to take a brief break to eat dinner and when I come back I'll finish this video up. Alright we're back. So I'm going to go ahead now and connect the power supply to the end of these rails by twisting the leads around the end and I'm going to start soldering and go from there. We're going to put the little lights here in between not sure how far I'm going to space these out yet, but ultimately it'll start with one at the very end. And we'll, we'll go from there. Here's that power supply connected to the end of the rails, all soldered on and ready to hook the lights to it. I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to start with this end here. We're going to connect one bulb. And just continue on the whole way spacing them out. Here's the end of the string first bulb. You can see how I wrap the leads around here and I also bent these uh, ends back so this bulb sticks out just a little bit because this is going to hang 
from the top. Um, I may use these as attachment points for something else later on as long as I isolate it. I also put one at the very end over here too so I can kind of get a feel for the distance between these. So I got to get 10 between here and here. Um, I could slide this down just a little bit more if I want. But this is going to sit, uh, and I think I'm going to use this bottle here so that it'll come down and just kind of like hang in there. I'll figure out the uh, other parts later on. I don't have a glass drill or anything, so I have to do this from the top. If I get a glass drill, I'll put the power supply in the bottom and I'll make a hole come in through the bottom with the cord. And, um,. You know, the power supply will be down there like that. I like having the light better on the bottom because it'll be more visible, obviously. So we'll we'll see. I'll get the rest of these put on, and we'll show you what that looks like before it's soldered. Here we have four of the bulbs done, and as you can imagine, this is a little bit of a time-consuming process. Obviously, this is kind of the elaborate way of doing it. You don't need to do it this elaborate. It's just the way I want to build it. This is um, a very stable way of doing it. Clive's way of using the leads works just as fine. In fact, I may do one like that because I have a lot of these extra pieces. Uh, I actually want to do one in a like on a project board of sorts and have a horizontal kind of system where the bulbs are all facing upward but that'll be a project for another day I'm gonna keep going with this it's actually kind of therapeutic just sitting here while uh, wrapping these leads around here's the stick all ten bulbs connected I'm just gonna go ahead and solder them all on now I've left that step for last so I can slide these around a little bit just to get them positioned better doesn't have to be perfect because after all this thing's completely random anyway so to have them perfect wouldn't make much sense but I do want to have them have some kind of uh, you know equal distance to each other as best as possible now, I have also to toyed around with the idea of kind of doing this with the leads left longer on it and kind of have these things flare outward but Again, that'll be maybe another build. I'll have to experiment with this. Also, on the one inside the wine bottle, I alternated taking these lights and pushed them out like this. In one way, out the other way. In one way, out the other. Just, just to give it a little more variation. And uh, I might do that the same on this as well. I'm going to go solder this up right back. And there's all the connections soldered. This is actually ready to go. All I have to do is connect it to the line in neutral, plug it in. Now, this is where I'm going to kind of hold off a little bit here. I'm not really sure what the final project's going to be. Like I said, I'm thinking of putting this into a soda bottle of sorts and just have it look, you know, like that and something that can sit on the desk. Not really sure though. There's other ideas I have for this, of course. Having the little hooks over here makes it easy to attach it to something else. And again, I have to make sure I isolate it so I can always take like a string let's say for example tie it to this and have it hang from something and maybe um, you know make this some kind of like a dodgy light you hang from your ceiling or you know I don't have any kids and like I said this is going to my dad's house and he doesn't have any young kids running around he'll find it to be an amusing little uh, gadget I'm, sh I'm quite sure I might just mount it to something like a piece of wood or something like that and he can just you know check it out mount it in a picture frame that's an idea you can do you know take some kind of a box and put it inside and actually have it mounted like that but I want to test this thing out now so I'm going to find some wire and maybe something with a plug on the end of it I can plug it in or I don't have any of those uh, sockets the little screw on sockets like I have on the other unit so I'm going to have to find something to do with this one but let me just rummage around here and see what I can come across Perfect. I found just the thing I was looking for. The only thing is, it's got the UK color code. And I'm not too familiar with it. I think... I think that this is the 
line. No, I'm sorry. I think this is neutral and this is line. I'm going to look that up real quick because I know here neutral is white and the line is black. So I'm going to have to cross reference that real quick. Yes, that is indeed correct. The blue is the neutral and the brown is the hot. However, the end of this plug isn't polarized and I'd rather have it be polarized so that way I'm always getting the neutral and the hot together at the same time the right way every time then have to try to figure it out and I don't know what happens if you accidentally cross this the other way. I'd imagine with the diode there nothing would happen but I don't want to find out after I spent all this time going the other way, you know, this is spent all this time building this thing. So I'm going to look at my parts bin. I think I have one with the grounded plug on it. Even though I don't need the ground, you know, I'll, I'll have a polarized plug for now, something just to try this out with. Now it's time to plug it in and see if it works. Word of caution, if you don't know what you're doing, especially when it comes to mains voltage items such as this, don't attempt to do this. You'll just get shocked. Because you touch that when this is plugged in, you're going to get belted, no doubt. Now this is going to need to do one of two things. It's either going to work to some extent, or it's going to go up and smoke and bang. Let's see. Now here's something interesting to note about this. You'll see that only one light is lit and it's not alternately flashing like the other unit I showed at the beginning of the video. There's a reason for that. Well, first of all, it does matter what kind of bulbs you use. These are the miniature type bulbs. I've never used these before. This is the second time actually doing this project. Um, I guess I kind of luck lucked out the first time. However, my first project, I had that same thing happen at first. It just didn't do anything. It just sat like that static. And um, I believe that there's some kind of a breakdown that has to happen um, for that light to be able to go off. And that's what causes the next one in the chain to go on. So it's kind of neat. It has to get like a, like a warm up time, I guess you could say. Because it seemed like I had a while where that didn't really do anything. And then I left it plugged in for a while. And then days later, you know, it, it finally looked like it does now. So, I'll have to, you know, put this into something where I can leave it plugged in the safe. And also, I have to figure out what I'm going to do with the final project of this. But for now, I just have this kind of cobbled onto the end of a three-prong wire. And you'll also see that there's, you know, just the ground cable just pinned off to the side there. In fact, let me keep zooming out. You'll see the other light in the distance here. Uh, how much faster it is. That's what it's going to take just to keep this thing plugged in for a couple days for us to actually come out like that. Then that's what I'm going to have to do. But ultimately, this should look like this. You should see this little bit of a twinkling effect going on here. So you shut some of my lights off here. And this is completely random. It seems sometimes like if you put your hands around the bottle, it slows down or speeds up, or I don't know if it's in my head or not, but it definitely has some kind of an outside impulse. Sometimes nothing happens at all. In fact, I noticed before when I came in the room, I had the same just one light lit. But, well, anyway really much that much more I could do with this video you get the idea how to put this together make sure you go visit Big Clive's website check out the project go check out his YouTube page he has a lot of great videos on there if you like this video and you're not already a subscriber please subscribe if you came here from Big Clive's uh, site welcome thank you for coming by I'll be doing more of these videos more frequently. I have a lot more coming up. I have ideas for it. Just a matter of filming them. And like always, thanks for watching.